But Angela, how terrible was it that so many of the people who were putting this intense pressure on Catherine with these despicable rumours and so much criticism over her for photoshopping a photo as if she'd committed some sort of terrible act of treachery when actually she was battling disgusting cancer. How terrible is it that so many of these people are connected to Harry and Meghan? So, for example, Stephen Colbert, the big TV chat show host in the US who used Catherine's disappearance from public view to spread lots of nasty rumours about William. He's a mate of Harry and Meghan. You know, Harry went on his show to, to promote his book. It just, It just all felt so nasty, that witch hunt against Catherine. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Uh, it was terrible, wasn't it? Heartbreaking, actually. Yeah. Uh, and and people were being uh, making such revolting comments, actually, about her and the marriage and coming up with everything they could. I mean, it was a desperation to try and take advantage of the opportunity that she was obviously very well, uh, very ill, because they told us it was a major operation. They didn't just say for an operation, it was a major operation. Um, and take advantage of what's happened and try and wipe her off the list of anybody who's useful or helpful or right for the royal family. And uh, I don't think you can be more cruel than that, actually. Now I'm really mad. You know, it's disgusting. How worried are you about Catherine at the moment? Well, um, of course I'm worried. I think, um, you know, she's 42, and that's an age which is very happy for a woman because if you've got a happy marriage, You've got three children. You don't need to worry about all that early stuff and being pregnant because you had very different pregnancies. Yeah, so that was a f***ing lie. She's found, um, she's found what she really likes to do, which is um, bring up families, helping them so that children learn how to be, uh, so there's not so much difficult problems with children. A marvellous um, ambition that she's got. Um, and she gets on very well with the royal family. She fits in. You could see that she really loves the king and the king really loves her, and that's a very special relationship. Um, and so I am worried that she can't enjoy that at the moment. Really, nigga? Um, and I think that uh, she will get over it. It upsets me hugely, actually, because mm -hmm. she deserves everything good because she's such a nice person and she fits in so well with the royal family. It's not easy, of course not. Yes! 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 But she's done, um, she's done very, very well. And I think she's much loved all around the world and I love her too. What do you mean by that? And William needs his queen. He needs her. Yes, she's he such needs. a big he, part he, of him and his success. Yes, I think he, he needs her totally. Um, she's uh, wise and she's down to earth. And she's also had more experience of life outside, which he hasn't. And, you know, he asks her advice. She's not bossy. Wow. She's not trying to take the spotlight away. Hmm. She's there in the same way that um, Camilla is, to be a huge support. Meanwhile, doing what you want to do yourself, um, at a, a, by the side, uh, you don't try and take on the same engagement um, unless they're supposed to go together. If you know what I mean. I don't know. You know, she does different things, and um, uh, I think that her family all round have been tremendously helpful to him. And uh, you know, you can't even. Yeah, she's now. the perfect support act, and we love her so much for that. <laughs> Gay. Yes. Of course, uh, Sarah Ferguson, Fergie, the Duchess of York, has also been battling cancer, which 
it just seems extraordinary, Angela, these three members of, of the royal family, even though Fergie is not an official member anymore. Uh, Andrew, now, look, we've both been very tough on Andrew, the Duke of York, in the past. Okay. I'm... <sighs> I'm coming around to a bit of a different way of thinking about him, and I'll explore it more in, in the months to come. But I think even though he made massive mistakes, he was, to a certain extent, set up. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? To take the fall uh, for Epstein. Now, that's not to excuse the fact that he went to visit Epstein after his conviction, but there's a lot of murkiness to this story. Is it wrong, Angela, that Prince Andrew is healthy and young and vibrant and wants to work and wants to give back to the community, but is unable to do so at the moment at a time when the stocks in the royal family are really low? Good question. And yeah. just in terms of numbers? I, I think that um, I haven't got as um, understanding as you yet, but I do think that... He hasn't tried to destroy the royal family. He's <laughs> quietly disappeared most of the time. And actually, when he was walking in front for um, <clears throat> just recently, twice he did it, one for the late king in, in Greece and one for the uh, Easter. Um, and it's actually, uh, I got it afterwards, that the lowest in the royal family go first, whereas the queen and the most senior ones the... come last. That doesn't make sense. So I thought it was uh, uh, not quite right to leave it like that, but he enjoyed it, but he didn't go up and shake hands with anybody. He just stayed there, and I think he's trying, and maybe he could get some sort of job. He couldn't do any engagements. He couldn't represent the royal family, but he could look after one area of land or something like that would give him something to do. Mm. Um, but I, I think that uh, although he might feel that he's been badly treated, he hasn't tried to take it out on anybody. Yeah. Which is which is on, I guess, shows his honor towards his family because obviously yeah. he's very hurt behind the scenes. Goodness me, Angela Levin, you're the best. I could <laughs> listen to no, you are. I could listen to you for hours. Your insight <laughs> into the royal family is second to none. But I think what it is about you that's really special is your compassion. So that was a lie. You understand how these people tick and. You see them as human beings. And I think sometimes, and especially over the past few months with what we saw happen with Catherine, I think sometimes people do forget that these are real people. I said, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, first of all, you're not gonna speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. With real emotions and you just, uh, you you hold them to account, don't get me wrong, but you treat them with humanity, and I think that's really important. <sighs> Boy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> well, do you see me fucking laughing, my nigga? Yes, you've got to come again. Angela, no, you've got to come very... again, because once I launch the Outspoken show, you know when there's big royal news our viewers will want to hear from you. So it's such an honor to have you. I very, very kind picture. of you. Thank you. Very generous. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely to be chatting to you once again. Thank you, Angela. Oh, I loved that. <laughs>